Oh, how's it going, guys? It is Timmy Joe. We're here in the studio. I got my test bench all completed. It looks amazing. We'll get some shots of that in a second. However, I have been very fortunate to be able to uh, get my hands on some pretty cool equipment, some graphics cards. We have, boom, an MSI Beast there. There's a GTX 1070 in this rig. And then I got this uh, Gaming Plus B350 motherboard from MSI here to review. A friend of mine uh, is upgrading and apparently Ryzen uh, CPUs are hard to get a hold of. Ryzen 5 1600s because <laughs> he bought one. They said it was in stock and now it's back ordered indefinitely. So we'll see when he gets that. But that's good for me because in the meantime I get to check out this motherboard and uh, kind of see what the difference is between this and the B350 that I have, the Asus Prime Plus. Notice the similar naming schemes, although my motherboard is not on fire. So, cue and intro, we're going to talk all about this MSI board, the differences I see between mine and it, and maybe whether or not you should uh, pick her up. <sighs> Okay, so we're testing this thing out with my Ryzen 1700 with uh, the Corsair Vengeance memory. He's actually going to be buying that off me. I got a couple new sets of memory that we're going to be testing out uh, later on, maybe next week. But uh, I, want, I was curious to see what's the difference between my motherboard and another B350 uh, motherboard. I'd also like to get my hands on some X370 boards. But uh, right off the hop, very impressed with uh, this B350 Gaming Plus from MSI because number one, over my board, although it's similarly priced, it has five fan headers instead of three. We all know I've had issues with that. It has direct voltage control. We all know I've had issues with that where I only have an offset mode. I can't actually dial in my, uh, my voltage. And that has met with some uh, superior overclocks over my previous board. But uh, I would say that this board is a bit finicky too. It isn't quite as polished, at least the uh, the UEFI and the BIOS, you know, in general, just the way things are laid out, I wouldn't say is as polished as uh, my Asus B350 board. So let's go ahead and check out what the BIOS looks like and then I'll give you some final conclusions on this motherboard. It doesn't end at the box art. This is the the BIOS of this MSI board and it is very hot in here. You know what? I'm not a big fan of a lot of graphics and stuff in your, your BIOS. I guess gamers are big into that stuff, but I'd rather have it just be plain, simple, easy to use, easy to get to things. Uh, and there are a few things that uh, I was it was hard to, for me to find in this BIOS. Number one, fan control. Now, you might notice it says fan control right here, but I see hardware monitor, and when I think hardware monitor, I think temperature is not changing the, the fan profile. But if you go in here, you do have quick access to all of your fan stuff. So it's it's there. You just got to kind of look a little bit for it. But, uh, you know, there's some automatic options. You can move your boot stuff around real easy up here. There is an easy mode. Makes things a little bit less uh, intense. But uh, in here, we go to overclocking settings. This is where things are, are nice. They're, they're extremely uh, well focused for the overclocker here. You have uh, your XMP profile or your AXMP, whatever from uh, <laughs> your, your RAM speeds. You can just automatically set them here. You know, it's direct CPU control to, to change the frequency. Uh, you have your, you know, direct control to change your CPU core voltage. And it's called CPU core voltage, very well laid out. You have your, your uh, RAM voltage here, everything easy to change. And I'm happy to report that with this motherboard being able to directly change the voltage, I can get a higher overclock than on my Asus board. If you've been watching for a while, you know that I only have a voltage offset. So it starts at like 1.21 and I can only add plus or minus 2.2 to that. So I can get up to 1.41, uh, but no higher than that. And on this board, I can go to 1.125 volts 
and I, I even brought this up as high as uh, 1.43 in order to achieve an overclock of uh, 4.075 gigahertz. So almost 4.1 gigahertz. Just with the AIO all set up here, no problem. I had to put my computer in a freezer before in order to achieve that overclock. Now, um, when I did achieve that overclock, it loaded into Windows, but it wouldn't run a Cinebench, uh, you know, all the way through, unfortunately. And there was a problem. When it did that, normally on my other motherboard, shut the computer off, should turn it back on, it says, hey, you might have had an overclocking issue. Do you want to go in the BIOS? You hit F1, go in the BIOS, tweak it, away you go. On this motherboard, when I hit the wall, so to speak, uh, when I turned the computer back on, all I got was a blinking cursor up here. And it would not let me do anything. And I tried multiple times to turn the computer, cycled the power, turned the power off on the power supply, then turned it back on, and it would never do any more than blink a cursor up here. I had to reset the BIOS entirely with the jumper on the motherboard in order to get back into Windows or back into the BIOS. And that was a little frustrating. If you're an unexperienced overclocker, you might be worried you bricked your motherboard at that point uh, because things have gotten so easy. So just keep that in mind. Now, that, that's no big deal for me. I know I go and reset the BIOS and uh, when it did that, it actually gave me the option to load one of my overclocking profiles. It saved that much, but uh, it didn't save any other settings in the, the, the BIOS. So I just loaded back into the BIOS and you know I verified everything was completely blank. But it does give you the option if you save a, a, you know, a good overclock to just load those settings and away you go. So keep that in mind. Uh, you know, this has five fan headers, which is really nice. It has a little slot around a little metal uh, cage around the uh, PCIe slot. So it'll help with graphics card sag. It has glowing red LEDs as you saw. So it's, you know, pretty good value considering its price point. It's not far off from the Asus board. And I might have chosen it had I known, but you know, there wasn't any reviews on the internet when I uh, uh, got my motherboard. I got Ryzen right at the beginning and I, most people were getting the higher end motherboards. So, you know, it's nice to have some reviews on this stuff to see, you know, re really what the differences is between, you know, apples to apples on uh, the motherboards. But uh, when I recommend this board, if you like overclocking and you like molten lava, by all means have adder. It's not a bad deal at all. There is lots of functionality baked into this that, uh, you know, the X370 probably is more oriented towards. So that's that's wonderful if it's at that cheaper price point. Uh, but I would recommend going with the Asus if you're a little bit less, uh, you know, of an overclocker and want more of a straightforward environment, something that's not going to like baby you a little bit more. Uh, but yeah, this thing's awesome for overclockers. Go right on ahead. So I'm at watch timmy joe on instagram and twitter it's a good idea to go check me out on twitter because i post pictures and little in tidbits of information on the videos upcoming uh, i have a uh, gtx 1070 i'm going to be comparing with amd's almost best graphics card i know people yell at me for that all the time i have an r9 390x in my possession from msi and i thought that would be a good uh head-to-head -head shootout nearing the edge of vega i know that Vega is more like the Fury X in the, the, the Fury series, but you know, that that's still a viable graphics card these days. It still plays 1440p games, absolutely screams through them. So we'll look at uh, both NVIDIA and uh, the, the red team versus the green team there. I'm babbling too much. Timmy Joe at Watch Timmy Joe on Instagram and Twitter. Hit the like button, subscribe, hit the bell. I got lots of videos coming up this week. It's going to be crazy. I'm going to try to stop throwing so many of them at you and make sure that they're quality and not as much quantity. Boom. Have a good day.